So, so, now we know how to put together atoms and such into making compounds, right? Either ionic or molecular. Well, now we're going to actually take compounds or elements and combine them to make, to make new compounds. So these are called chemical reactions. So remember I told you back, way back when, there was actually what are called physical changes and there are chemical changes. A physical change is where you do not change the identity of the two substances. But a chemical change, like I said, is basically a chemical reaction. You're actually, actually turning it into something new. And then I told you way back when then as well, um, as well then, there are um, a few ways you can kind of tell if something was a chemical change or a physical change. And one thing I said to look for was things like this, right? Remember I said this? Makes a gap. If it bubbles or fizzes, it was a chemical change, not physical. If it made a solid, physical change, not chemical. If it changed color, that's definitely, a, definitely um, uh, um, I think it was a chemical change, not just physical. If it gave off light, and I said if it got hot or cold, those are all evidences that something was actually chemically happy, not just, not just, you know, mixing, you know, not just mixing or just dissolving, it's actually making something new. If you see one of those five things, that's evidence that an actual chemical change, you made something new, you've rearranged molecules, made a new chemical composition. Okay, so that's that before, but I guess since you're doodling that, write that down quick. Okay, I'm going to go on, make a gas, make a solid, change color, produce light, hot or cold. Okay, so in chemistry, whenever we have a reaction, we're going to try to, try to write it out using what's called a chemical equation. You've probably all seen some kind of a chemical equation, maybe at some point in your life, in a, you know, either in a book or TV or movie or something, you see something like this. So a chemical equation, we're going to try to use now these formulas that we know how to write and put them in as something plus something going to something. So there's several parts of every chemical equation. First, the things on the left side of the arrow, these are the ones that are actually reacting and combining. So these are called the reactants. And then they're reacting and they're combining and they are, they are producing the products. So the ones on the left side of the arrow are the reactants. Those on the right side of the arrow are the products. Okay? Yeah, question. Um, so for that specific one, why do you start with two oxygens and end with three oxygens? Okay, well, it's not balanced yet. Well, oh. Isn't it? Um, uh, uh, um, 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 yes, you're right, because there's four hydrogens and only two hydrogens. So yes, it's not a what's called a balanced equation yet, but I'll get there in a second. Yeah, so the left side is what's reacting, is what's combining, then you're producing something. And the little arrow there, you see the little arrow in the middle. So you notice we put a little plus sign between, right, different things, plus sign. Yeah, okay. Now we also normally, though, we also normally want to tell, well, what state were the reactants or the products in? Did you use them as gases? Did you use them as liquids? Did you use them as solids? Or was it actually used as an aqueous solution? Which means you took it first and you dissolved it into water and then you use it. Maybe it's an aqueous. So the way we do that is we just put one of these symbols after, after the formula like this. So A was a gas, B was a liquid, and it made C that was a solid and D that was an aqueous solution. So you just Put it after it like that in parentheses. Gas, liquid, solid, and then yeah, aqueous means, you know, it was dissolved in aqua, aqueous water. Okay, so that's the four possible physical states that we will deal with. So let's just look at a chemical reaction and I'll show you what one might look like. 
Okay? So you can see we have lots of polyatomics and metals and things, and they're all combining and making lots of stuff. It probably makes no sense to you right now, but I promise it will make sense to you in a couple of weeks, hopefully. Well, hopefully it will. Hopefully it will, I guess. It's just you studying, doing homework, it'll make sense to you. Uh, so, 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 so this, believe it or not then, believe it or not then, is a shorthand way of saying, like, like, oh, aqueous acetic acid combines with solid sodium bicarbonate to produce aqueous sodium acetate, liquid water, and carbon dioxide gas, which is pretty long. So, so again, so again, this here then, this here then is a nice shorthand way of Oh, trying to represent what's going on. So we see the elements, and we see how they how they rearrange and stuff. Okay, so do you hope you get your... You had a little time to go run and print out your Chapter 6 handout after lab. So pull that out, and let's look at a couple here. So I just want to practice writing some of these uh, equations. So, oh... Okay, so let's see. How could we write this equation here? So, we're going to use our excellent naming skills. I'm sure we all have by now. A solution of sodium carbonate. What's the formula for sodium carbonate? Sodium carbonate. Figure out sodium, what's the charge on sodium? Figure out carbonate, what's the charge on carbonate? Put them together, make a neutral thing. What's sodium carbonate's formula? Na2CO3. Yes, Na2. Oops, let me use the smaller one. So I'll be here all day. Na2CO3. Sodium's plus, carbonate's 2 minus, so you need two sodiums to, to balance it out, right? Okay. But it says it's a solution of sodium carbonate. So what else do I have to add to that? Got to put AQ, aqueous. Because, because again, it's, it's, it's a solution. It's not solid. It's, we're mixing this up in water. With a solution of magnesium chloride. So find magnesium on your table. What does chloride mean? Figure out the charges. What would magnesium chloride, magnesium chloride's formula be? MgCO2. Mg is 2 plus chloride. Ide means non-metal by itself. It's one negative, so I need two of those. And it's a solution, so what do I write? AQ. Put a little AQ there. React to form, so I'm going to put a little arrow. I'm going to run out of room, so I'm going to write it down here on the next line. But a solution of sodium chloride. So what's sodium and chloride? Sodium is what charge? Chlorine is what charge? Yeah, so just one of each, right? NaCl. And what, what phase would I put? Again, it's a solution. So AQ. And solid magnesium carbonate. What's magnesium's charge? What's carbonate's charge? Put them together. Because it said a solution of sodium chloride. So what's magnesium carbonate? MgCO3. Magnesium's 2 plus, carbonate's 2 minus, so just one of each. And it says it's solid, so I'm going to put parenthesis S for solid. So there you go. There you go. Now again, this equation is not what we call balanced because the elements are not the same on the left and right, the total number, but we'll get there. We're just writing rough ones for now. Okay, let's try the next one together. A solution of aluminum bromide reacts with chlorine gas to produce a solution of aluminum chloride and liquid bromine. Okay, aluminum bromide. So find aluminum, find bromine, put them together. What would the formula have to be for aluminum bromide? A uh, what? Br three. Right, aluminum's three plus, bromine, is one minus, so we need three of those. 
And what state or what phase would I give it? So there's a solution, so aqueous, right? Reacts with chlorine gas. What would I write for chlorine gas? Okay, it's not Cl. Why is it not Cl? Ah, it's Cl2 because it's one of the seven diatomics. So let's flash back here. So remember the seven diatomics? Go over to number seven, go over to group 7A, make a seven shape. Those elements plus hydrogen. Remember, whenever they are not in a compound, they always appear with a buddy. So chlorine is one of those. So it's not the Cl, it's Cl2, and then it says gas. I'm going to put G. Good. To produce, put a little arrow, a solution of aluminum chloride. What would aluminum chloride's formula be? Al. Al is 3 plus. What's chloride? Negative. 1 negative. So what would the formula be? AlCl3, yeah. And what state would I need? State it's a solution, it says. So aqueous, aqueous. Plus liquid bromine. What would I write for liquid bromine? Br, Br what? You said it. Two. Bromine is one of the seven diatomics. See it there? See it there? And then I put a little L after it for liquid. So which are the seven diatomics? N, O, F, C, L, B, R, I, and H. N, O, F, C, L, B, R, I. Right? So remember, so we said, remember, so we said you go. Let me pull it up here. Maybe this would be easier. So. These right here, plus hydrogen. So you go over to, remember we said to number seven, then over to group seven A and make a seven shape. Remember saying that? Those plus hydrogen. So whenever you have just those elements by themselves, not in a compound, they always appear with a buddy. There's always going to be two. So again, if it was something else, I'll say it was magnesium. Well, that's not a diatomic, so it would just be Mg. But if it's one of those, then you write two. Okay, that was a rule of sevens. Okay, your turn. Try C. Solution of silver nitrate and iron 3 chloride. React to produce solid silver chloride and a solution of iron 3 nitrate. So get your naming on. See what you can do. Wow me. So, I'll say it again. Go watch the YouTube videos on naming if you need the help. Practice this. Like I said, there's a whole bunch of naming games on Blackboard too. You can just practice naming, naming, naming. You just gotta know how to name, or you will not only not pass five, but you will not pass anything from here on out. Because there's gonna be lots of things like this. If you can't name it, then you're screwed. You have to name, you have to name, you have to name. <laughs> it's so important. Okay, so silver nitrate. Well, let's think. So silver, you find silver, it's in the magic triangle, and it's plus. Nitrate's one of the ones you memorized. NO3 minus. Okay, so silver nitrate must be just one of each. AgNO3. And it said it was a solution. So aqueous. Iron 3 chloride. Oh, iron 3. Well, the 3 tells me it's 3 plus. Chloride. Oh, and I see ide means non-metal by itself. So just one. Find it on the chart. It's 1 away, so it's 1 negative. So I got a 3 plus on a 1 negative. So I need 3 of the negatives to balance out the 3 plus. So FeCl3. And that's also a solution, it says. So aqueous. Okay, that goes to make solid silver chloride. Silver and chloride. Well, we said over here, silver was Ag plus. Chloride is Cl negative, so just one of each will come right together, and it was a solid, it said. Iron 3 and nitrate. Oh, iron 3 is 3 plus. Nitrate is 1 minus. So I need three of those nitrates to balance out my one iron. So iron and then three nitrates.
and that is a solution. So equals. So something like that. The good news is you have all of spring break to practice the crap out of this. Mm -hmm. The bad news is if you don't, you might as well just drop after spring break, because I guarantee you will not pass if you cannot name. You just got to know how to speak the language. Imagine it's a Spanish class. We have to learn to speak Spanish. This is chemistry class. You got to learn how to speak chemistry or you are screwed. So you have to learn how to speak the language. Okay. Right? Yeah, I mean, this, this takes practice. Practice. I mean, even for me, I mean, at first for me, I was the same way. I was, you know, you know, sitting there for minutes. Going, okay, what's this? But, you know, you just do it enough, and it just rolls off the tongue, so. Okay, try the next one if you haven't. This should be a quick one because there's only three things. So solid magnesium, oxygen gas, and magnesium oxide. Either high school chemistry or 108. Um, I think you can still do it with this one. It's not the recommended one, but you can still do it with this one, I think. Because, because I'm not sure it's... I'm not sure I need to double check. But I'm not sure if it's like mandatory or if it's just advised to be had. Something like that. But I know 108, though, normally is the one you, you normally take to get ready for. Okay, well, let's look over this one. So, solid magnesium metal. So, what's magnesium? Okay, you're almost right. Nope. It's just magnesium. It's not magnesium ion. It's just magnesium. It's not in a compound. We're not making charges. It's just magnesium. So, it's just Mg. If it, if it was magnesium ion, or, or which... It, it, in a compound, it would be something like that. But by itself, it can't be charged because it won't exist because everything in nature tries to become neutral. So it's just magnesium, just Mg. And it's a solid, so I put S. Burns and oxygen. So plus oxygen. What's oxygen? O2. O2, one of the seven diatomics. One of the seven diatomics. And that's a gas. And again, it's not too negative. It's not oxygen... Oxygen and part of an ionic compound should just by itself. So just neutral oxygen flying around to produce magnesium oxide. Okay, okay. Now we got they're combining together. So now we're worrying about one's a metal, one's a non-metal, and now we got worry about charges. So magnesium's two plus oxide's two minus. So what would it be together? MgO. MgO. And what would I write for the phase or the state? It is a solid. Yes. Okay. Again, Mg is 2 plus, O is 2 minus, so just one of each. Again, it's not O2 because it's only when it's by itself, it's the diatomic. And a compound can be whatever it wants. It can be 1, 2, 3, or 47. It doesn't matter. Okay. Well, as, we, as I was pointing out, I was pointing out, Pointing out, as Aaron kindly asked us about. The ones I just wrote, though, 
with this growth over you don't always make sense because you have different numbers of atoms going in than you have being produced. Well, there's this thing called the law of conservation of mass that says that matter can neither be created nor destroyed. And I mentioned this back in several chapters. So that basically means, well, whatever matter goes into the equation and starts it, that same matter has to be around at the end because you cannot just create new matter and you can't you cannot also lose the matter along the way. So in other words, the equation has to be balanced. So if three oxygens go in, three oxygens got to come out. If five sodiums go in, five sodiums got to come out. So we have to be balanced. Now when you're balancing an equation, what you're going to do is you're going to change the number of the different molecules or elements that are going in. But you do not change the formulas. So what I mean by that is, let's say you know the formula is magnesium oxide. Oh, MgO. But you need two oxygens. You don't say, oh, well, don't change it to be MgO2. You can't change the formula. Because you can't take a, a correct formula and change it. What you can do is you suggest how many MgOs you have, or how many sodium chlorides you have. So never take a formula and change the correct formula. <laughs> Just going to balance it. So let's look at this one again. This is the very first one we did. This is methane gas burning in oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water. So this is not balanced because one carbon goes in, one carbon comes out. That part's good. good. Four hydrogens go in, but only two hydrogens come out. See that? And the two oxygens go in, but two, three oxygens come out. So this is violating the law of conservation of mass, right? That doesn't make any sense. So I have to balance this. Again, the way I balance it is I will put numbers in front of the CH4 or the O2 or the CO2 or the H2O. What I will not do is change their formulas to make them balance. So I won't say, oh, it's four hydrogens here, so I'll make water H4O. You can't change the formulas, okay? All you can do is just say how many you have. So in this case, I might say, huh, well, I have four hydrogens here and two hydrogens there. So in order to make that a four, I need two of them, right? So I might do this. I might write a two then. Oh, that gives me four hydrogens now, right? You see that? Now, how about the oxygens? On the left side, how many oxygens do I have on the left? Two. How many oxygens do I have on the right now? I've got two here, and I got two times two. I've got four. See that? I've got four oxygens on the right and two on the left. So how can I make those balance? Put a two here. Now I've got four oxygens. So now, now this is called balanced. So the number of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens on the left is the same as number of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens on the right. So I have not violated the law of conservation of mass. Whatever goes in, comes out. All that happens, again, in a reaction, you're not making something totally new. All you're doing is just rearranging the atoms and putting them in new combinations. So that's called balancing a chemical equation. Okay, let's try a few more examples. Is that written down? Okay, let's try one. Aluminum metal reacts with air to produce a white powdery compound, aluminum oxide. Now first off, whenever you hear something like reacts in air, what they normally mean is you means it's reacting with the O2 in the air, the oxygen in the air. So just a little note to yourself. If you read equation on homework or in a journal or whatever in a book, it says, oh, so and so reacted in the air. Well, this the oxygen in the air is what they mean, the O2. <laughs> Not the nitrogen or the carbon dioxide or things. So. Okay, so, how would I write this? Aluminum metal. What would I write for aluminum metal? AL. AL. Yes, I would not write AL3+. plus. It's not in a compound. Don't put a charge on it once by itself. Okay, aluminum metal. And what, what phase would it have? If it's a metal, it's probably a solid. Reacts with air, because we said that means O2, oxygen. What phase would that have? Oxygen's a gas, last I checked. 
Okay. And then we make white powdery aluminum oxide. So now it's a compound. So what's the charge on aluminum? What's the charge on oxygen? Figure up how to make them balance out. So what would aluminum oxide formula be? Yes, Al2O3, because aluminum is two. I mean, three plus oxides two minus, so two and three both go into six. Right. What phase would I put on that? What do you yes. think? Yes. If, it, if it's white and powdery, it's probably a solid. Not many powdery liquids mm. or gases around. So, okay, but that is not balanced, right? That is not a balanced equation. Because we've got one aluminum going in, two aluminums coming out. Two oxygens going in, three oxygens coming out. So we're going to go back and forth and just keep kind of trying things until we get a nice happy ratio that makes everything work out. So one aluminum on the left and two on the right. So maybe first thing I try, I'll try two here. Okay, that seems reasonable. Now I got two oxygens on the left and three oxygens on the right. How can I make both, those both the same? Well, it's kind of the same thing. It's two and three. They define the it's come multiple again. So, so let's try three oxygens here, and then what? Two over here. Ah, but now I did that, and I just changed my aluminums too. Now, how many aluminums do I have on the right side? Four. Oh. So I'm going to erase that and make this four. So now it's four aluminums on the reactants. Two times two, four aluminums on the products. Three times two oxygens on the left, six. Two times three oxygens on the right, six. So that's balanced. You just go back and forth and just keep changing numbers until you get a nice ratio that works out. Yes? I just have a question. How did you get the two on the aluminum? Okay, that's based off the charges. So, if, so if, you, if you find aluminum on your periodic table, aluminum is 3 plus. It's in the magic triangle. Oxide is 2 negative because it's 2 away. So in order to make them balance out, i got to have 2 of the 3 pluses and 3 of the 2 minuses to make them both 6 and 6 to cancel out. Okay. Let's try another one. Metal aluminum reacts with acetic acid. So now you don't know what acetic acid is. I'll tell you that one. But aluminum, you know, you just told me aluminum was Al. Acetic acid, I will show you. It is H with an acetate, C2H3O2, aqueous. The rest you can figure out. What would aluminum acetate be? So what's the charge on aluminum? What's the charge on acetate? Think about this. How would you put them together? <clears throat> so what is the charge on the aluminum? Three plus. What's the charge on an acetate? One. One negative. So how would I combine those? What formula would I write here? What would I write? A L parentheses, yeah. C two H three O two three. So that's three of those negative acetates to balance out the three positive on the aluminum. So it was aqueous, so that means AQ. And a gaseous hydrogen. What's hydrogen? H2, right? Because it's one of the seven diatomics, right? So don't just write H. H2 and gas. Okay, that is not balanced. So let me give you a little hint on how to balance um, some of these equations when they have polyatomic ions. So notice how we see 
acetate here, and we see acetate here. See that? Mm -hmm. Your best plan is to balance that as one single unit, as a group. Do not try to balance the carbons, the hydrogens, and the oxygens all separately. You will go insane. Do not try to do that. Just think of it like, oh, aluminum and aluminum. The hydrogens and the hydrogens, the acetates and the acetates. Don't try to balance them all separately or you will go nuts. So whenever you have a nice polyatomic like we do here, so you've got this and then we got it again right here, balance those as a single unit. Okay, so let's try this. So one aluminum on the left, one aluminum on the right. So far, so good. One hydrogen on the left. Again, I'm considering the hydrogen that's not in the acetate. Two hydrogens on the right. Okay, so I'm going to try two here. Well, now I've got two acetates on the left. How many acetates on the right? Three acetates, right? See my three here? Oh, well, two and three, that, that, that doesn't work. So I, I can take a two and three and make them both into what? Six. So let's make this a six. And then how do I make how do I make aluminum acetate into a six? Put a two in front of the uh, put, a, put a two in front. Now that makes two times three six acetates. But I just changed a bunch of stuff by doing that. I made two aluminums, so I need two aluminums. And I made six hydrogens. So how do I make H two show me six hydrogens? Put a three in front of it. Now that's six hydrogens. So look that over. Two aluminums, two aluminums. Six hydrogens, three times two, six hydrogens. Six acetates, two times three, six acetates. Yes? Um, for the reaction, why did you put um, three acetates? You mean here? Yeah. Because that was all based on the charges we said. Because aluminum, aluminum is three plus... Acetate is one minus. So I need just three acetates to balance out the aluminum. And so that's all just naming. That's just naming. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to balancing, like for like a quiz or something, do you always want the least common denominator? You couldn't do like four, twelve. Y yes. Six. Yes. Very good question. Yeah. It's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. So when you so 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 when you do this, you always want the simplest ratio. You don't you don't want four to twelve to four to six. Mm -hmm. Reduce it to two to six to two to three. So that, would, that would be wrong. Lowest. Wrong. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so you want it to be yeah the lowest one. Yeah, the lowest one. And the homework will also mark it wrong, and it'll warn you to, yeah, okay. yeah. You have to do the simplest ratio. Okay. Awesome. <clears throat> okay. So let me give you three tips like that that will make your balancing life much easier. So write these little tips down. So, balance any elements that appear more than once on either side. Balance that element last. So, write it down, and then I'll explain what I mean by that. Okay, so, I'm going to look at this equation and see, is there any element that appears more than one time on the same side of the equation? Do you see an element that appears more than once on the same side of the equation? Oxygen, right here. i got oxygen in two places on the right side of the equation. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. yes. So that means, do not try to balance your oxygens first. You'll go insane. So balance all the ones that only appear one time first. So balance the carbons first then balance the hydrogens. The last thing you want to do is try to balance the oxygens. So that'll make it much easier for you. So let's just try this one real quick. So five carbons on the left. So I'm going to try five carbons on the right. How many hydrogens on the left? And I only got two on the right. So what do I do? Six. Oh, now let's do the oxygens. Two on the left. How many are on the right now? 
How many? 16. 16. 5 times 2 plus 6. 16. So how do I make the O2 a 16? 8. 8. Yes. Now, now I'll just point out, if I hadn't done that first, I'd have been going crazy because I'd have been like, now why not? Okay, so I got 2 and 3. So let's try a 3 here. And now which of these do I double, right? I mean, if I try, well, that's 6. Oh, that's 6. But how do I make this 6? Do I make this a 4? Make this a 2 and this a 2? And you go crazy. So do the oxygens last, okay? That's a, that's a little handy tip. Second handy tip, I just told you. If you have a polyatomic ion on both sides, treat it as a single unit when you're balancing it. So like I just told you, acetate. Don't balance all the individual elements separately. Balance it all as a unit. So in this one, for example... Wait a second, since you're writing. I have... So we're going to see, is there, a, is there a polyatomic that appears on both sides? So tell me, which polyatomics appear on both sides? Nitrate. Nitrate, because there's a nitrate here. Oops, let's do a little box here. There's a nitrate here, and there's a nitrate here. You see that? That's a horrible box. Try that again. And, yes, there is a phosphate, right? There's a phosphate here, and there is a phosphate here. Right? So when I'm balancing this, I'm going to balance it, keeping those together, not trying to balance the oxygens and the nitrate and the phosphate just as oxygen. Don't do that. Balance the nitrates as nitrates, the phosphates as phosphates. Okay, so let's just try this one. So let's look here. So, one calcium on the left, three calciums on the right. So I would try a three here first. Now, how many nitrates? Three times two, right? See that? Three times two. I have six nitrates. So we're balancing the nitrates, the whole thing. How many nitrates are on the right? How many nitrates are on the right? One. One. NO3 is a nitrate. That's not three nitrates. NO3 is not three nitrates. So I need six nitrates. So we'll try a six here. <clears throat> oh, now I've got three potassiums on the left, six potassiums on the right. So what would I do? Put two here. Now I have two phosphates on the left and two phosphates on the right, so it's balanced. So again, it becomes much harder if you do all the oxygen separately because <laughs> you go crazy again. So keep those polyatomics together. And the last handy little tip I want to show you is if you're doing a reaction that has hydrogens, H pluses, and hydroxides, OH negatives on one side, and you have H2O on the other side, then try to treat those separately. So write that down and I'll show you what I mean here. Okay, so in this formula, I have I have H plus right here. I have two H pluses combining with this SO42 minus. And here I have a K plus combining with OH minus. And then water is basically like an H plus with an OH minus. That's what basically what water is, H2O. So what I'm saying is, when I'm going to think about balancing this, I'm going to balance these hydrogens with these hydrogens, and I'm going to balance these hydroxides with these hydroxides. What I'm not going to do is balance 
is balance, oh, two hydrogens, and, a, and that's a third hydrogen. So, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to balance treat all the hydrogens together. I'm going to keep them separately. So, let's just try what I just said and try to balance it separately. So, I'm going to balance these hydrogens here, these two here, with the one H. So, again, think of water like it's H with an OH. So balance it here with this hydrogen. So two hydrogens on the left. You know, I know it's H2, but really it's only one hydrogen because the other one's a hydroxide. That's the confusion. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to try a 2 over here too. So let's try a 2 here. So maybe I'll just use the HOH to make it simpler. Oh. Okay. Two hydrogens here. So two hydrogens here on the right side. You got me? One sulfate on the left, one sulfate on the right. One potassium on the left, two potassiums on the right. So let's try two potassiums. Now two hydroxides, and I already have two hydroxides. So we're good. So, my old Tip again is <laughs> when you see when you see you have hydrogen, hydroxide, and water, think of the water as a hydrogen with a hydroxide and balance the hydrogens and then balance the hydroxides. Okay, well let's try a couple of examples here to make this sink in, hopefully. So let's go back and do the ones you just wrote out the equations for. Now let's balance those same ones, okay? So I'm going to go back. Okay, so let me go back. And I'll do, do the first one with you. Because I'm just that kind of a helpful guy. So we said it was... Sodium carbonate, and eh, crap, use a smaller ink. Sodium carbonate plus magnesium chloride went to sodium chloride plus magnesium carbonate. Right? That was what you wrote. I also wrote some phases on that, but just for time's sake, I'm not going to write all the phases. So, how can I balance this? So, let's just go through it. So, one thing, I, one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to treat carbonate as carbonate, right? See how there's CO3 on both sides, right? I'm going to balance that as a unit. I'm not going to balance the carbons and hydrogen separately, right? So, make a note there. So, I have a CO3 here, and I have a CO3 here. Okay, so let's just go. So, the left side, how many sodiums? Two. The right side, how many sodiums? One. So let's make that a two. Left side, how many carbonates? The right side, how many carbonates? One. Okay, that's good. Left side, how many magnesiums? One. The right side, how many magnesiums? One. The left side, how many chlorides? Two. The right side, how many chlorides? Now I have two, so that's it. We balanced it. So I had to put a 2 in front of the NaCl. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, let's try the next one. So we wrote, she wrote a lovely equation here. We wrote aluminum bromide. That was ugly plus chlorine gas goes to aluminum chloride plus bromine gas. So let's balance this. So think about that. I'll ask you for your opinion here in a second. See what you think. Do your aluminum, do your bromine, do your chlorine.
Okay, ask your neighbor what they got. How many aluminum chlorides? How many? I mean, aluminum bromides. How many chlorines? Okay, people are telling me they got two, three, two, three. So let's check that. Two aluminums, two aluminums. Two times three, six bromines. Three times two, six bromines. Three times two, six chlorines. Two times three, six chlorines. Yes, that works. Okay, try the next one. You're on a roll. You already wrote it, so now it's got to balance it. Okay, ask your neighbor or somebody around you, maybe somebody in front of you, behind you, if they're not right around there. See what you got. How many silvers? How many nitrates? Again, keep the polyatomic together. How many irons? How many chlorines? Help each other out if they if you're not sure or they're not sure. Walk them through it. Okay, so tell me, tell me, what's your coefficient in front of silver nitrate? What's the number in front of silver nitrate you put? Three. Three. Okay, how about iron three chloride? None. Nothing. It's just a one, which is, which is not, you don't have to write in. How many silver chlorides do you need? And then how many iron three nitrates? Just the one, yeah. All right. Again, it's, it's not really zero. <laughs> it's one, but you don't have to write the one. Okay, we'll try the next one if you haven't. Magnesium plus oxygen makes magnesium oxide. Okay, how many magnesiums? Two. How many O2 oxygens? One. One. How many MgOs? Two. Two. Perfect. All right. Okay. Okay. So, there are several types of reactions we need to be familiar with. So, I'm going to go through these. Um, there are basically five basic types, of, roughly. Uh, the first is called a combination reaction. It's called a combination because that's exactly what it does. You have two or more things combining to become something else. So you see in the example here, I have A plus B combining to make AB. See that? 
So that's called a combination reaction. A plus B goes to AB. So the first type is a combination reaction. Second type is just the opposite, where now you are not combining, you are actually decombining or you're decomposing. So now AB breaks down into two or more things. Then the third type is called a single replacement. And there's a general formula there. A plus BC goes to AC plus B. And then I'll show you this in a second. The last one, the next one is double replacement. So two things are being replaced. AB plus CD goes to AD plus CD. And the next one, they write it wacky, but they say combustion. Something with carbons and hydrogens combines with oxygens to make carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so let me show you the examples here, and then we'll try to pick them out of a lineup here and see if we can figure out which one is which. So, the first one's pretty easy. It's two or more things combining to make something else. Now, again, they show you two, but it could be technically three things combining or whatever. So, here's an example. Calcium plus chlorine makes calcium chloride. So, two things, calcium and chlorine... Combine to make one thing, calcium chloride. It's pretty easy. Okay? Now, decomposition is just the reverse. One thing is now breaking apart into two or more things. So here we have iron 3 sulfide breaking apart into two things, iron and sulfur. So that's decomposition. That's the opposite of combination. So these are the two that I really want to explain. So single replacement versus double replacement. So in a single, you only have a single thing moving, or single thing being replaced. So let's look over here on the left side. I have copper plus silver nitrate going to copper 2 nitrate plus silver. So I had one thing that moved and changed partners. On the left side, nitrate was partnered up with silver, and then it moved and partnered with copper. So that one thing was replaced and it moved over. You see that? But on the next one, that's called a double replacement because now we had two things that moved. So the left side I had barium with chloride and potassium with sulfate. Then I made barium with sulfate and potassium with chloride. So you see how they switch partners? So the chloride was with the barium, now went went where the sulfate was, and the sulfate was with the potassium, and now it went with the chloride it was. So two things, double, that's why it's double replacement. And then combustion is always just some kind of what's called a hydrocarbon. You've all heard of that term, hydrocarbons, like, you know, petroleum and gas and oil. It's called a hydrocarbon because of the, why is it called a hydrocarbon? Why is this called a hydrocarbon? Not a trick question. Because it's combined carbon? Because it's made up of hydrogen and carbon. <laughs> so we call it a hydrocarbon. Yes. <laughs> yes, ingenious. So yeah, so 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 whenever so whenever a hydrocarbon is burned in oxygen, you always get out carbon dioxide and water. So anytime you're burning a hydrocarbon, if it's methane, propane, diesel, gasoline, oil, whatever, you're always making Carbon dioxide and water. Carbon dioxide and water. The only difference is the ratio, if it's two or three or whatever you're making. Okay, so all these hydrocarbons. Okay, well, let's try a few. So, 
Your turn. Look at these five examples on your handout. Hope you get them written down so you don't have to take an hour to write them down. Uh, and just take a guess. Which of these is which? So classify them properly and then talk it over with your neighbor to see if their five guesses match your five guesses. So is it a combination, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, or combustion? Figure it up. Talk it over. Don't tell me. Tell somebody else. Oh, wait. Where is that one? This, this is not the same on our handout. Oh, 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 not, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, you're right. Okay, this one first. Okay, we'll do this one together. Then we'll do the, the handouts next. I think you're right. Okay, sorry. Okay, so first, can we, can we do this together? Then we'll do the handout one. You're right. So the first one is this. What is the first one? Oh, I see two things on the left becoming one thing on the right. So that is combination, right? Okay. How about the next one? Oh, I have two things that moved, right? You see that? You see that? Chlorine went over here where the sulfur was, and sulfur went over here where the chlorine was. See how two things move? So that is, yes, double replacement. Yes. Oh. I should mention, by the way, sometimes you see it called double or single displacement, too. You hear both terms. Double displacement, double replacement, singles. Okay, the next one, yes, yes, um, yes, let's give it away, but one thing breaks apart into two things. So that is decomposition, yes. How about the next one? Calcium and lead with chlorine goes to calcium with chlorine and lead. So one thing moved, right? What one thing moved? The chlorine, right? The chlorine shifted from the lead over to the calcium. So only one thing, so that's single replacement. And then I've got some carbons and hydrogens with an oxygen making carbon dioxide and water. So that's definitely a combustion reaction. Okay. Let's try another one, then I'll do your little handout here. So how about this one? What's, what's the first one here? One thing becoming two things. Decomposition. Next one. Two things move, right? Because the nitrate goes with, with the potassium, the chloride goes with the silver. So that's double replacement. Two things move. How about the next one? Two things combine to make one thing. Yep. And the last one? Only one thing moved, right? The chlorine moved with the zinc. Awesome. Okay. Now it's your turn. And then we'll wrap it up here. So, take a guess, write them down, ask your partner, see what you think. guesses. So how would you classify A? Single replacement or single displacement, right? Single, right? Because one thing moves, the chlorine. How would you classify B? One thing became two things, so decomposition, yes. How about C? Two different things came together to make one thing, so combination. How about D? That's combustion. Yeah, Car it's hydrocarbons, it's oxygen, making carbon dioxide and water. How about the last one? Two things move. Nitrate and bromide both change partners. 
D was combustion, E was double replacement or double displacement. Okay, so I'm not going to see you for a week and a half, but I hope you think about me often as you're practicing your chemistry. So, um, um, so I want to say um, again, um, uh, again, go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash getchemistryhelp. I have videos on naming ionic compounds, videos on a molecular compound. I have videos on balancing equations, writing equations. So watch all that for practice. Because when you come back, we're going to uh, have a quiz on Chapter 5 on that Tuesday. Because the whole we'll do on Chapter 5. So you have a big quiz on naming Tuesday when you get back. So practice the heck out of that naming. You need to have that down. you got a week and a half to get it down. you got 10 days. you got plenty of time. So I'll see you then. How much are you? I have you confused? Yeah.